All right, with us right now, we've got Caroline Carter. And Caroline, you are the founder and CEO of Done in a Day, and you're the author of Smart Moves. You're found on the web at carolinecarter.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Josh. I'm thrilled to be here today. So Caroline, you have an amazing story, and I'm, I'm hoping that you know, for someone who doesn't know your story, you could kind of share how... I mean, your journey is truly inspiring. And, and I just kind of want to turn my mic off and listen to you kind of tell your story of like where oh, thank you led you to and what you ended up creating. Well, um, thank you, Josh. Um, I never thought I'd be in the position I'm in today. Um, I was married with three little children and we decided to divorce. And after 12 years of not working, you know, in the professional you know, full-time yeah. in the professional world, I found myself in a position where I had to make some hard decisions. And it was a very expensive uh, community I was living in. And my choice was, um, you know, how do I provide for three children as a single mother and go back to work? And I had to dig really deeply. There were, there were a lot of mornings, you know, a lot of coffee mornings where I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I mean, this is crazy. Um, and I had to really dig deep and think about what is it that I naturally do best that I could potentially monetize. And I came up with, with one thing, that I'm able to naturally create order out of chaos. And I mm -hmm. thought, hmm, so what does that translate into? Um, so I had an opportunity. You know, I was, I was doing a lot of praying at that point and open to all opportunity. And my sister's college roommate called me. She had unfortunately recently lost her husband unexpectedly um, to a heart attack and wanted to move from San Francisco back to DC. She bought a house sight unseen, had two little kids and said to me, I, I can't handle any of this emotionally or physically. Would you be willing to go over to the house that I just bought, do an assessment, figure out what I need to do to, you know, move in, carpet painting, lighting, outdoor landscape, spruce up, you name it. Um, and I said, sure. I didn't even hesitate, but I said, sure. I had never done anything like this, meaning I had done it for myself. Um, I had moved at that point 10 times in my life and I was very, you know, OCD about getting settled in an organized fashion and so forth. So, that project, um, amassing tradespeople and painters and, and pulling in landscapers and sourcing carpet, and um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I ended up wow. moving them in. I actually pulled my housekeeper in, if, if <laughs> you can believe it. And I said, here, you have to help me with this. Um, and we created a really smooth transition for this broken family with two little kids. Mm. And, and I got paid to do it. And I thought, wow, that was my aha moment. Like, maybe I could do this. And I've always been a goal-oriented person, a self-starter. Um, and I decided that this, this might be something I could shop around and, and see if there's any interest in this. And, and when I moved this family in, they had come from San Francisco. And she said to me, you need to be a home stager. Well, I had never even heard the term. Um, she said, everybody stages their homes in California. And, and what you did was essentially just stage a home for me to live in. So I want you to talk to this guy who's the number two stager in, in California. Anyway, long story short, I, call, I called the guy. And, and he spent 45 minutes on the phone with me. Josh, you and I both know how extraordinary that is. Yeah. 45 minutes for busy people is, is just a gift but it changed the course of my life. Um, and home staging was not, uh, it wasn't yet commonplace in the DC metro area. So I began to think, I can do this. I, I can build a company. Um, having no experience doing that in the past, but I thought, what the hell, why not? And I began to take my dog and pony show around to all the top agents in DC and explain to them what I was looking to do, how this would help their clients. I, I would help them educate and inform their clients how to make the most, the most use of their time and money 
when designing their home to sell or home staging it so that it would sell faster for more money. And that's what I did. Thousands of houses later, here we are. Okay, well, okay, <laughs> thousands of houses later. Wait a yeah. minute now. How yeah, does yeah. one go from the first couple of houses to thousands of homes later? How did you grow that part of the business? Well, um, thousands of it homes was, later. No, to seriously. <laughs> well, well, it was all referral based. I, I was a one man band. Yeah. Um, and, and if I made a mistake in, in scaling, uh, I didn't surround myself quickly enough with other people who are able to support the mission. I, I literally was, I suffered from the, no one's gonna care about it as much as I care about it, and um, ended up doing a lot of it myself, with the exception of accounting and taxes and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but I basically focused on each client, and I really, really connected. I think it's one of my strengths, is I'm a no-nonsense, um, truth teller who, yeah. who really has uh, the ability to zero in on someone's discomfort and, and lead them to a position of comfort. So I immediately create this trust by really just listening, mm -hmm. really just listening because everybody goes through the same thing when they're talking about selling their homes and moving. So I, I had one team in place and I had two teams that I had three teams I was running, all of which were doing different houses at the same time. And that's how we got to thousands of houses over 14 years. So Caroline, I mean, it's one thing to be the world's greatest home transition expert, but it's another thing to make those connections and get more and more people to discover you and to encourage that word of mouth. So what I want to know is what were you doing to encourage that and get that visibility? You know, that's a great question. I, I want to say that I was always a truth teller, even in difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. I, I was not scared to tell someone, that's a bad idea. And here's why. Um, I think you might want to try it this way. I also found that a lot of people that I worked with, if they were pleased with our services, they told other people. Now, I said that I never really did any advertising, and that's true. But I found that by investing in the relationships yeah. with the person I was working with at the time, they did my marketing for me, honestly. I literally put on blinders and really just focused on who I was working with at the time and was able to immediately turn that off when I went to the next client to check in. So I got the business to the point where my teams were doing the majority of the work. Mm -hmm. And I literally could stop in and alternate between tour leader and cheerleader. Yeah. Right? So, so once that happened and people would tell other people, then media started noticing and said, hey, gee, will you, you know, tell us a little bit about that? Because people think that home transition, well, I know how to move. Mm -hmm. I know how to, you know. I'm just going to put a bunch of black hefty trash bags together and throw them in the back of a pickup truck. Well, what if you have a 53 foot moving truck? I mean, people don't know what they don't know. And my passion is really to make sure that people understand the full scope of what happens from the moment that you make the decision to move until you unpack the last box in your new home. And there are so many different aspects to it. it it's what led me to write the book. Yeah, so Caroline, when more people faster, when when people see your name on the side of the building figuratively, right? And they're like, yeah. Oh, my gosh, everybody wants to work with Caroline, you can't service everybody. No. It's impossible. No and so now you have to start creating teams. And so when people are paying and they want access to you, how do you replicate? And how were you able to successfully replicate yourself in a way so you could scale? Well, this is, this is an interesting question. In the beginning, I mean, we didn't start out running three teams. In the beginning, I was on every job, every moment yeah. in order to be able to train the teams, right? So, so that was really important for me. Even when I was able to step away from the day-to-day, -day, you know, being there for eight hours a day, I, I was always able to check in either in the morning or the afternoon where I could do my 15 minute top, uh, you know, stop by and say, okay, I love what you did, but I think we were thinking a little bit more like this. Mm -hmm. 
right? So I, I am lucky because I still have the original crew with me that I hired wow. 14 years ago. Oh my gosh. It's really extraordinary. Really extraordinary. Yeah. I know how lucky I am. And plus I love what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, that helps. <laughs> yeah, I should say so. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you've got teams out that are all, you know, they're all doing their thing. Um, you know, you're kind of going from, what, what are you doing when the teams are uh, kind of fairly a little bit, they're much more autonomous. What, what do you spend your time doing then? So I spend my time interfacing with the client on strategy, right? focus, strategy. I also come into a job when we, we call it setting the template, meaning when the, the client has worked with my teams to do all the purging, sorting, donating, dumping, then I would come in and quote unquote set the template of what it's going to look like after it's ultimately painted or spruced up or whatever. So I would be there with the movers um, where we're moving furniture around or bringing in beds, meaning set the template for the room. What, what do we ultimately want it to look like? so that it's going to you know, really sell quickly and at top dollar. And a lot of that is understanding who your target buyer is, mm -hmm. what the needs are of the target buyer. On my side with the seller, I have to do a lot of educating because people will say, well, I like my chartreuse dining room. Mm -hmm. I don't want to paint it. It was just mm -hmm. painted a year ago. Yeah. And I have to explain how our personal choices have costs associated with them, right? Mm -hmm. And that in fact, your buyers, who are looking for, you know, nothing but to move in. They will pay top dollar to move in and do absolutely nothing. They're looking for neutral, right? Yeah, oh, They're yeah. They're looking Always. for right. totally neutral. I can move in. Yes. You know, just give me the key. I'll write you a big check and we're yeah. good to go. Yeah. So, so, you, so part of it is, is just knowing exactly when to, to touch these clients, um, have these discussions, it varies for every project. Sometimes you'll have a client who totally gets it and you're going to have busy executives. I, I worked for a lot of the who's who and they all tell me, hey, I want a closet like Peter's closet, you know, mm -hmm. a, a client I did. And I'll say, okay, well, Peter gave me 20 minutes in his closet. Can you give me 20 minutes in your closet to tell yeah. me what you want to keep, what you want to donate, what you want to do? He's like, done, right? So, you know, it depends on who you're working with, but I think, I think the biggest reason why Done in a Day has been a success is because we listen. We listen and we are able to provide strategy. The, what you have to understand, Josh, is this home transition and the reason I wrote the book is because it affects everyone in mm. every location at every price point, mm. right? And so the details, the 10 step process that, that I detail in the book is exactly what I'm doing every day, exactly what we've done, what I had to do myself, you know, moving to Palm Beach Gardens recently, right? I had to follow my own advice. Oh, yeah. So, and I, and you I, better. Was, well, Otherwise, I, you're I be better. In trouble. I, People are going to find out. <laughs> I was glad to know that I actually didn't make any big, huge mistakes in the book. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a process that affects us all. And essentially, what, what we're looking at is recognizing the, the emotionality around moving yeah. and how we can be our own worst enemy mm -hmm. and how we leave money on the table, right? By looking at something emotionally, when frankly, your house for, for many people is their biggest asset yeah. and, and you need to change your mindset entirely. It's an asset. It's like you know, any other financial asset you own, but mm -hmm. yet because it's your home, you look at it differently. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to change that. Caroline, quick question, quick answer. What's your opinion on family photos? Don't do it. Oh, so hide them? I, take them away. Pack them. Pack them. And the reason why I say that is, look, think about it, Josh. When you are looking to purchase a home, you are looking to purchase a home for your family. Mm -hmm. okay? Right. So in Washington, D.C., I used to call it the I Love Me wall. Yeah. You know, very often you'll, you'll walk into someone's office and there is me with the current president. Here's <laughs> me with the, I would tell them, you know, take, take down your I love me wall. Put away yeah. all your tombstones of the companies you've bought and sold, of mm. all of the achievements, your, you know, where you, what country club you belong to, where your children go to school. Because essentially, 
you are distracting a potential buyer. Yeah. What they're there to do. You know, I right? find that when, when we've looked at homes and I see a lot of personal effects, right. uh, I start uh, becoming much more voyeuristic and I of start course. thinking about them more right. so than I think about me right. in this house. Right. So, a f so when you stage a home, which is only one part of the process, but when you stage it effectively, you are focusing the buyer's attention on exactly what you want them to focus mm. on. You are removing the distractions. They're there to buy a house. So they're either going to buy it or they're not. And they're going to know in the first couple of minutes. So you better know exactly what you want them to see and where, how, the, how you want them to feel from the moment they look at the house online, right? You want that to be a calling card to say, wow, this could potentially be my next home. Let me see the rest of the photos. I mean, you and I both know you can look online at some houses and go, oh my God, seriously? They're like dirty slops on the floor. Yeah. You know, I saw a plunger in a bathroom in an online photo. I'm like, ooh, plumbing problems? Nah. <laughs> but, but, but essentially, I, I'm trying to educate and empower sellers to understand this process and to understand how important it is to take more responsibility for the sale of, of, of your own asset. This process affects you the most. Why wouldn't you want to take more responsibility? Yeah. Right? Great. Well, Caroline Carter, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us. You're the founder and CEO of Done in a Day, and you're the author of Smart Moves. I would imagine you can find that. Where, where, do, where do people find the book? On Amazon. Amazon, sure. Well, good. Then it's super easy to get yeah, to. Yeah, very easy. Yeah, and uh, your website is carolinecarter.com. Anything else that, that you would say, oh, great first place to connect with me is what? What I would say is if any of your listeners decide to buy a book and they have any questions, please feel free to email me directly. There's mm -hmm. no charge. I love to engage. I love the questions and challenges um, that, that people come up with when they're reading the book. Um, just email me at caroline at carolinecarter.com and I'd love to interact with you and see if I can help you strategize. Caroline, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it.